Um, you'll get to get more details. You going to say something? So um, just you'll get the information. Cal's, uh, did you make that slide with those on there, Cal? Cal made a slide with um, the, num the how you register and everything you'll need so you can get that so you don't have to write it down as she's talking. We made a slide for you. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Those of you who didn't hear online, Rose said a whole bunch of awesome stuff that you should probably find out what it was, but I can't repeat it because she didn't have the microphone on, so I don't know either. <laughs> However, we do have a video from uh, Amy that's going to play, and so uh, there's a slide, and you can contact us or you can contact Amy um, for following up with what she's going to talk about. Anyway, thank you all for singing happy birthday to me. I love you all very, very much. I am going to go put Victoria to bed. So believe with me, she goes to sleep. Because <laughs> the last two days that she had a nap, it was 11 o'clock, and mommy, mommy, mommy needs sleep tonight. Uh, so, yes, I was on the phone with people, and my daughter's calling out from the bedroom, Mommy? I'm like, child, you better go to sleep. <laughs> So she did not have a nap today, and I cannot afford a second wind. So you please forgive me for leaving, but I will be here with you next month, I believe, in Jesus' name. And Rose is believing God that I will teach, so we'll see. I love you all. Have an awesome, awesome night. And uh, ready for the video? All right. Thank you. I love you. And welcome to Real Life Girlfriends for this month's teaching. I wish I was there live and in person with you guys because I know Rose has an awesome message for you tonight. Um, but listen, I wanted to share something I'm going to have coming up here at the end of August, a workshop that's been on my heart for a while now. And I'm excited that it's finally going to be happening here August 22nd and 23rd. And I've talked to Rose and Pastor Terry about this, and uh, they have blessed me in allowing me to share this workshop with you all because I know it is going to be a major help to many of you. And it's honestly going to complement a lot of what we talked about at our Real Life Girlfriends Retreat back in June about redeeming the time. But I'm going to be doing a virtual workshop. I'm hosting this over Facebook Live August 22nd and 23rd of this month, so coming up in just a couple of weeks. And I'm calling it the Fully Awake Workshop. So the Lord has, has been talking to me about this workshop for a while, and he just dropped that title in my heart just a few weeks ago. You know, there was a, a verse of scripture the Lord took me to actually very early on in my walk with him, and it's out of 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 through 6. And this is in the Amplified, and it says, But you as believers, all you, all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's Son, you are not in spiritual darkness, nor held by its power, that the day of judgment would overtake you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of light and daughters of day. We do not belong to the night nor the darkness. So let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does. But let us keep wide awake, alert and cautious, and let us be sober, self-controlled, calm and wise. Man, there is so much that we can unpack in that scripture. But did you notice why I said there that we're daughters of the day? It says that we're not supposed to be indifferent as the world is, right? We're supposed to live awake, self-controlled, calm, wise, redeeming the time, right? You know, we talked about that back in June. You know, the enemy doesn't have to deny your calling. He just has to distract you from it, right? We all know that. He, he just has to bring that spiritual indifference. And I, I have fallen victim to that just like anyone, right? And so I'm excited for this workshop because I'm going to be teaching really practical principles, uh, not just redeeming the time, not just on kind of what we talked about at the retreat, um, but so many ways that we can live fully awake, that we can really maximize not just on our time, but on, on our spiritual giftings and what the Lord has put in our heart and just kind of awaken some of that passion and purpose that I think gets drowned out in so much of everyday life, 
right? Like one of the things that we talked about in redeeming the time was living purposely, worthily, and accurately, not vague, thoughtless, and foolish, right? And so we're going to be unpacking those principles and more. It's going to be two 45-minute teachings, like I said, all virtually. So even if you cannot attend live at 12 p.m., I'm doing it during the lunch hour for a reason, but if you cannot attend live, then of course you'll have access to those replays. But I think it's just time. You guys, there's a stirring in my heart, and I know there's a stirring in, in many of us to just really live out what God is telling us to do in this season. And I have a passion for helping women kind of just cut through that noise and learn what is it that they need to pick up, what do they need to put down, and what do they need to be putting aside? Because there's always things vying for our attention. There's always competing distractions and focuses and things that can pull us off track. But what do we need in this season to close out 2024? What do we need to pick up? What do we need to put down? What are some things that maybe we just need to set aside, right, that are not for this season? And how do we discern between those things? You know, it's interesting to me. I, um, I've i had this flower garden at my house in Ohio that I never had opportunity for in Florida because it was just too hot for me to want to plant flowers in Florida, but I really enjoyed uh, this year. I've been able to plant a lot of really beautiful flowers in my front yard. And, you know, I, as I've been planting these flowers and watering them, I mentioned to my husband, I was like, I feel like I've got like these dead, these dead branches, like these, these dead leaves that are, you know, coming up, up. And they're like taking over some of my better flowers. And it's like, my flowers aren't blooming the way that they should be because I've got all these like, you know, these weeds and these like brown, you know, flowers pulling up, coming up with my healthy ones. And he said, well, Amy, you have to be really diligent to pull out those dead leaves as they come up and pull out the weeds as they come up. He said, because what happens is that if you don't pull out the dead, if you don't pluck out the ones that are, are dead, he said, actually, he goes, the soil directs all the nutrients to the dead leaves trying to keep them alive versus going to the, the leaves that are producing life and nourishing them and helping them grow stronger. And I was like, if that's not a spiritual metaphor for life and for us as women, I feel like so often the enemy has us just distracted and pulled in so many different directions, these dead leaves. So are pouring all of ourselves into things that are just ultimately not going to matter because he knows if he can have us pulled in that direction, then we're not going to be producing life in the areas that God has called us to produce life. And so, like I said, this is my passion. This is going to be the heart of the workshop. And I hope you all are going to join us. Now, I am going to be charging for this, um, but here's how I'm going to do it, you guys. I'm going to charge a $47 entry fee, but I'm going to allow you to register as a single attendee. And I'm also going to give you the option to register and invite a friend for free. Okay, so it's going to be $47, but you can invite a friend for free. I'm going to encourage you reach out outside of your church group, reach out to somebody who maybe um, doesn't have the supportive uh, you know, community that you do here at Real Life Church and encourage them to join. You know, even if they're not of necessarily, you know, uh, the same thought process or even denomination, um, it's really important. One of the things I love about coaching is that it just kind of breaks through denominational lines. I'm going to be teaching spiritual truths and biblical principles that are not denomination specific that any uh, Christian woman can lay hold of and receive and produce fruit in their life with. And that's one of the things I just love about the word is it just kind of crosses that bridge. So any woman that comes to mind, I would encourage you to pray about it. Ask the Lord who you should invite and, um, and encourage you to kind of allow him to bring that person to mind. Because I really do believe that there are women out there hurting that need what's going to be shared during this workshop and so I would encourage you to join them. So we are going to, I'm going to stream this over Facebook live after kind of thinking through the different platforms and all the different ways to do it. Facebook live made the most sense for this first workshop. I may do it differently in the future because this is not the first workshop I'm going to be doing online. Uh, but for this first one, I'm going to do it through Facebook live because then they'll have access to the replays. I can post PDF resources for you. You guys can post uh, your testimonials 
questions. You can commune with other women within the Facebook group. It's going to be a closed group. So that way only those who register and the friend that you invite are going to be allowed into that group and have access to the materials. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. If you guys are interested in learning more or registering for this event, registration is going to open Sunday night, this Sunday night. And if you're interested in learning more or registering, I want you to text the word workshop to 248-978-3942. Okay. Again, the word workshop, I want you to text it to 248-978-3942. Okay, and once you text that number, the word workshop, Sunday night when registration opens, I'm going to send out a link to everyone that texted through that number, a link to join the workshop. Okay, or forgive me, a link to register for the workshop, because the workshop is going to take place August 22nd and 23rd over Facebook Live. It's going to be two 45-minute sessions, okay, through that platform. Now, if you do not have a Facebook account, it's okay. You can easily sign up for a Facebook account. Now, some of you may be saying, Amy, I don't like Facebook. I don't want to be on Facebook. Listen, I get it. I never go on Facebook. I'm not even honestly a big, I'm not into social media. I just, it's not my jam. I'm working on it. I, I feel like I probably need to show up more on social media because the world needs light, right? But it's not my jam either. So if you don't have a Facebook account, I would encourage you to register for a Facebook account just so that you can have access to this private group. You don't have to go in there for any other reason than this private group. It's going to be a very easy way to access this virtual material. Okay. Now, the $47 investment, here's, I heard, actually heard this recently. I was like, it's actually kind of good. I, had, I heard a girl say, what you pay for, you pay attention to. Okay. So yes, I'm going to be charging a fee for this workshop because I want you invested in it. But more, actually more than that, I want you investing in the life of someone else by inviting them to it. I want you investing in yourself and I want you investing in someone else. So um, again, I would encourage you sign up. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be well worth every dollar invested. The Lord is going to do some amazing things. I'm excited for what he has in store for this. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email Coach Amy Kate K. That's C O A C H A M Y C A T E K at gmail.com. But like I said, if you want to learn more about this workshop and information for it, text the word workshop to 248 978 3942. All right, I love you guys. Stand to attention because Rose has an awesome message for you tonight. I will be joining you all virtually and I love you very much. Bye. You enjoyed Amy at the retreat, right? Yes. Did everybody enjoy the messages that she taught? I mean, they were life changing. So if, if we really need to invest in ourselves, what do I do with my glasses? Can you hand them to me? <laughs> Thank you, sister. It's worth the investment because we need to. This, this things that are things that are happening in our lives and in our world is is so. I don't even know how to say it. It's just, it, it, yes, it's sad. It's depressing. It's it's stressful. And just watching the news and just everything that's happening around us. We know Jesus is coming soon, and I believe that. I don't know how soon, but as we're seeing the days getting darker, our lights need to shine brighter. And so, you know, if you're interested in that, and, you, and she did it so you could invite somebody for free. So that's two for one. So you could go in half, really, with someone, and, you know, they, they can give you half the thing for the registration. And if you don't want to go on Facebook, I was talking to Cal. I'm like, okay, Cal, maybe we could, if people want to meet and we can get on my Facebook account or Cal's Facebook account, we can watch it here. So, we, you know, so there's a way for us to get this information. And so at the end of the service, Cal will put up the slide with all her information. Um, so you can get in contact with her, with her. And when she told me about it, I was like, absolutely. She's like, you think I could do a video? Absolutely. Because we all need this. I need this. The enemy is, is out. I mean, listen, there's so many testimonies in here of the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. 
And it's vital that we get that we get in the word and we get rooted and grounded in it. Grounded, rooted and grounded, not just coming here just to go to a service Sunday, Wednesday, or for girlfriends, and then you go out the door, and then the enemy's right there waiting to, to steal what, what was sown in your heart. It's so true. I'm living it because, I, to, I mean, I've, I, got, I have this message that the Lord gave me when I was on vacation a, a, a week or so ago. And he, it was the title of it was, he just spoke to my heart. I was sitting doing my morning Bible study and praying and just listening to him. And he just gave me the words, the art of continuing. I'm like, I don't know what that means, Lord. And that's all he said. And you know when he gave it to me today? I didn't know what I was going to teach. I didn't know how he wanted to do it. He gave me a scripture, but um, I didn't know what, what he was going to do. But he's so amazing. So I, I, I found the scriptures. I wrote down everything that, um, you know, I was get, just putting it in. So I saved it, right? And then I had to go uh, somewhere. I had to go on an errand. And so I came back. And so I saved it to my, my uh, I was saving it to my USB drive. And it said it was corru- that it was corrupted. So I just immediately like, stop, stop, stop. And the Holy Spirit said, email it to yourself. Rose. So I sat down, I emailed it, and I didn't, I had already saved it, so I didn't try to save it again or open it. And so when I got here, yeah, it was corrupted. But I sent it to myself, so I was able to open it up and 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 send it and print it out and use it. But God is so good, but the enemy doesn't want this word to go out. It's important. We need this tonight. We need this tonight, the art of continuing. We can't give up. That's what he wants us to do. Get us off track into doubt, unbelief, and fear, and all these things. That's what his whole goal is. Right? Do you agree? We have to build ourselves up. We have to know who we are in Christ if we're going to to be successful. Amen? uh, I looked up the word art, and in Webster's it says, a visual object or experience. Oh, let me pray. Sorry, Lord. Let's pray first. (laughs) Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come together, that we can build each other up, that we can lift you up. You are our source. You are our supply. You are our everything. And, Lord, this service is yours. And, Father, that we, we will receive everything that you have for us tonight. And right now, I bind any weights, any distractions, anything that might hinder your word from going forth. Satan, you are under our feet and you have no business here, so you leave now. You take your hands off these ladies' ears and off their minds. And, Father, that we will receive what you have for us, that we can continue the life that you have for us. And, Father, I just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Webster's Dictionary defines art as a visual object or experience consciously created through an expression or skill or imagination. And the word continuing means to maintain without interruption a condition, a course, or action. Amen? I looked it up in the Webster's Webster's 1828. And that's the Webster who, you know, he he was a Christian man who wrote the Webster's Dictionary. And the 1828 version says, to remain in a state or place, to abide for any time indefinitely to last, to be durable, to endure, to be permanent, to persevere, to be steadfast or constant in any course. Amen. So, Because we, we, we have work to do. Cal, put up that, uh, that uh, PowerPoint. I found this PowerPoint, and it's a, it's a continuous road. Is it up there yet? Okay, so we're on this road that's, that keeps going and going and going and going, right? Yeah. Until we get to eternity. We're walking this road and we look at all the different, you know, turns and twists and all that. And that's how our life is. It's not going to be an easy path, right? It's going to be a, a, a zigzag road just like that. I thought that was a good, just a good visual. I like to see visual things. And so... Um, we are on this road, and we're going to get to the, to the end where, where we're going to get our reward. Amen? And so um, in 
the first scripture the Lord gave me when I was in, in, um, or, in Orlando was John 8.38. 8.31, I'm sorry, Cal, I gave you the scriptures. Eight, you have them. 8.30, 8, 31, and 32. I left the two off, Cal. And this is in the New King James. I'm going to read it in three versions. The first is the New King James, 8.31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then the, the, it's the RSV version. RSV, please. 8, 31, 32. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you will truly, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It will make you free. And then in the, um, in the Passion Translation, I like the Passion a lot. So <laughs> I always go there to see what it says. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach you, you can camp there right there for a minute. <laughs> you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. How many want to be free? How many want true freedom in their lives? And it's only through Jesus that we have that freedom. And we are, if we are his disciples, we embrace the truth, right, of what it says. And we live the truth. We walk out the truth. Amen? Our relationship with God is the most important relationship we will ever have in our lifetime. He's number one. Not your, not your husband, your children, your friends, your family, your job, whatever. He's the number one. He has to be number one. He has to be. Family will pass away. Friends will come and go. But God is with you every single day of your life, every moment of your life. And often our life is like a jigsaw puzzle. And remember, Amy brought this puzzle in of this beautiful picture that God sees our life as, but we see it like these puzzle pieces. I took this home and I saved it because I said, okay, Lord, you might want to use this again. But look at all these pieces. This is what we see because we don't know what, you know, we don't know, we don't know our who, what he has for us, his plans and purposes. But if we walk with them, we get it realized every day. Every day we see a little bit more of what he has for us. And he has this beautiful life of ahead of us, in front of us, right before us. But we have to lay hold of it. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. We see so many things happening in the world, such craziness. And people who don't know him, can't, they won't see that picture. And they don't understand that their life is a puzzle, that there's pieces. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. So there is a plan for us. Amen. We might look, we might be looking at one little piece that looks strange and confusing, but to God who has the box top of our life, it makes purpose, perfect sense. To God who has the box top of our life, it makes purpose, perfect sense. Amen. He holds all the knowledge, wisdom, and insight into the most intimate details of our life not just our life, but the world around us. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. So he knows our life, but he knows the world's, what's going on in the world, what, what's going to happen, and how it will affect us. Amen? He is in everything. He is everything to the one who believes. He's my everything. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. God far surpasses the size of our problems. And we will get a clear understanding of that when we're focused on him. Not the world, not our, not our friends, not our family, not what's going on at work, not you know, the gossip and all the different things that happen around us. Every day there's something swirling around us. Amen? 
when we as God's daughters make the decision to focus on God every day of our life, we will, take, make, we will make better decisions for ourselves, our families, and for those we come in contact with every day. Every day. God's been trying to tell us something because I, for the last times that I've taught on a girlfriends and then a Wednesday, I taught about, you know, about, you know, resting in him. So if you haven't listened to those messages, go back. And then this past Wednesday, I taught about something totally different, but it, it's the same principle. Yeah. Yes. So go back and listen to Wednesday, too. It'll help you. I don't know why he's given. I know why, because we all have been stressful. The enemy's just been attacking us within our families, within our lives. And just, you know, we've been doing, we're busy, busy, busy. We're doing, doing, doing. And we don't take time to spend time with him and just shut it down. For that week, for that we were away, it was the best week because I had been, I have been not feeling well and just all kinds of stuff. And just to have that time to shut down and not talk on the phone and not check email and all, I didn't do any of that. But I sat down with him every morning and then I had fun with my husband the rest of the day. But we got to spend time with him and let him calm our minds, our hearts. Amen? Our lives, calm our lives. Amen? When we, when we commit our lives to Jesus, there should be no turning back. There's, there should be no turning back. We should be moving forward in him. Of course, we're going to have obstacles. Of course, we're going to have trials and tribulations, health issues, all these different things. But we rely on him. Colossians 1.23 in the New Living Translation and then in the Passion. Got it, Cal? You must continue and believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. I'm up here to proclaim it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Um, maybe I gave you the wrong scripture. Nope, that's the right one. I'm looking at a different version. Look at, let me look at it in the Passion. If you continue in the faith, ground, faith grounded and steadfast. We have to be grounded and steadfast. Is this the Passion? If indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon, never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. And this is the glorious news that I preach all over the world. This is the glorious truth we need to be preaching all over, in, our, in, our, in our sphere of influence. People need to know. If we think about, about it, there's nothing of real or lasting substance to which we can, turn, we can turn to apart from him. In spite, there is an epidemic of believers who drop out of the race. There's so many people who get excited about the word. They come and they say, oh, I want to join the church. I want to be baptized. And they have an excitement and a, and a hunger and thirst, and then it goes away, right? Many begin well, and then they quit. We've seen a lot of quitting. I've seen a lot of quitting since I've been here. Ms. Flo's seen a lot of quitting. We've seen a lot of quitting. We've seen a lot of quitting here since we've been here in Port St. Lucie's. Many begin well and then quit. It could be a gradual loss through small compromises like you don't you slack off on church. You first you were coming every Sunday, every Wednesday, every meeting, every this, every that, and then you know little by little, you're not coming on Sunday, you're not coming on Wednesday, you're not coming, you're coming sporadically. That's how the enemy gets us. Oh, you can stay home today and watch it online. We need to be together. The word says that we are supposed to be together more and more as the days get darker. Amen? Amen. We, we start not spending time in the word. First, we were in our Bibles. We were excited about what we were learning. We're taking notes and writing the scriptures down. We're not praying. We're not talking to the Father. We're not talking to him or hearing his voice. 
hanging around people from our past, doing things that we, don't, we shouldn't be doing, that we had left behind those things. Because the words that we leave those things that are behind us, we leave those and we, look, we point forward. We move forward. That's how we're going to grow. There's more of a sudden departure because of pressure from family or friends or getting offended. You get offended and you, and you, you, know, you stop coming because you're mad that somebody said something and you mistook it or you didn't ask, what did you mean by that? And get it straightened out. And then it's something that was so minor or stupid. It, it, it is because it's like, did you mean, what did you mean when you said that? Ask the question instead of taking it upon yourself and getting that, 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 that imagination going, right? Amen. So there's an epidemic of believers who drop out of the race. And it's so sad because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the Lord, especially living in this age. I didn't ever, you know, as a little girl, didn't ever think that we would be seeing the things that we're seeing now. I, I didn't, you know, 20, 24, I, I, when I was born in 1959, I couldn't even fathom 2024. But just to see the change of culture and families and, and you know, just, just values. it's it, values. Everything is open book now. Amen. So I, did, I said, Lord, you know, how am I going to explain this? And he told me to use the rich young ruler. I'm like, really, Lord? <laughs> the rich young ruler? How is that going to tie in? But okay, because he's been talking to me about the rich young ruler. I've been reading this book. It's called I Am Aleph Tob, which is the name of Jesus in Hebrew, Aleph Tob, the first and the last. And so it's a really good book. I got one for Diane because it's, it's, they, they teach you about the Hebrew words because they're more, there's more substance with the Hebrew words than our English language. So I got Diane one so she could help me out. Diane, how do you say, what does this mean? And she's been reading it too. Have you been reading it too, Diane? Yes. But I'm almost done. But look it. Look at how I have, it's really good. And so he had a chapter in there about the rich young ruler. And I was like, Lord, one day I want to use that, that, that uh, illustration because we hear it all the time, right? And so Matthew 19, 16 through 22 in the New King James Version. And on the heading of it in, in the New King James, it says, Jesus counsels the young, rich young ruler. So in the, in the New King James, it says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. But if you want to enter into life and keep the commandments, you shall not keep the commandments, he said to him. And then he, keep the commandments, he said to him, Which ones? This is what he asks Jesus, asks Jesus. So Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bar bear false witness, honor your mother, father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, he was like, the young man said, well, all these things I've kept since my youth, from my youth. What do I still lack? So Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I was like, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean, Lord? So the first thing, the Lord brought, told me this. The first thing is when he said he had kept all the command, commandments, that wasn't true. What's the first commandment? Exodus 20, 23, 20, chapter 20, verse 3. Jesus showed him that he could not even keep the first commandment. He was saying, I kept all these others, but he couldn't keep the first commandment. You shall have no other God before me. What was his God? Money. Money. Possessions. That was his God. He, I, Jesus didn't say that when he gave him the whole Ten Commandment list, a little list of, yeah, I, I do that all, I do that fine. I've been doing that since I was a young man. But Jesus, Jesus shook him up. You shall, he said, you, you, that's not true. 
You couldn't even keep the first commandment. You shall have no other God before me. Think about that in our own lives. What we put first, our jobs, our, our families, our children, whatever it is. You know, we're trying, to, you're trying to do all that, keep all that together. And we're not putting him first. And that becomes an idol, like money was an idol to him. Right? Think about it. It's true. Jesus is not saying this, this passage that we can't have wealth. He didn't tell him that and still have salvation. He said, go sell your possessions. That means like your household. He didn't say go empty your bank accounts and give it to everybody. Sell your possessions. Those things that you're not going to take into eternity with you. Your stuff. Because we all get stuff. I got stuff. We all have stuff. We buy stuff, right? Jesus knew, knew his love for his possessions, and these were his idols. Think about it. Are these our idols, something in our life that we're putting ahead of him? He has to be number one. He thought his good deeds were the path to, to, for eternal life, and yet he was unaware of the very thing that was stopping him from a relationship with God. What is the thing that's stopping you from a relationship with God? What are you putting before him? You have to make him your first priority. His very own wealth and power or, and position for what he, is what he really worshipped. Jesus called him out and named what he needed to do to be truly free and follow Jesus. No matter what we hide, no matter how deep we bury it, we can only worship the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. I always preach to myself because the Lord gives these messages for me. Just as we can put our importance into material things, Jesus is warning us that we, we must be willing to give it all up to follow him. Are you willing to give up everything to follow him? Lord, this does not mean any, does not matter to me. Does not mean anything to me. He's going to make sure we have all our needs met on all our wants and all our desires. He wants to give us the desires of our health. Well, our, our, he wants the desires of our heart. He wants us to have wealth. He wants us to have possessions. He doesn't want them to have us. Right? That's the thing. He wants us to enjoy life. But he needs to be number one. And everything else needs to be way down here. He needs to be way up here. Our top priority every day. We're not doing that. There's so, you, we can see it in our world that it's not happening. Amen? Jesus telling the rich young ruler that he must sell everything and follow him was not about the wealth. It was about whether he could give, up, give that up and lay it aside and follow him. Jesus knew that this was going to be a request too big for the rich run for him to accept because that was his God, his obsession, his focus. And so he used the analogy. After that, it was talked about the, the, the analogy of the camel through the eye of the needle that you won't, you won't see God. If a camel can't fit through the eye of a needle. You, you don't remember that verse? The true lesson is what do we lack? What is our God, our small G-O-D? in our life? What is holding us back from a supernatural, spirit-filled, obedient life fulfilled by our relationship with him where we can say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life. I ask him about everything. I get my instructions, directions from him. We would see so many things change in our lives. We would, we would, have, we would be healthy, <laughs> We would be wealthy. We would be content. We would be happy. We wouldn't be longing or needing anything else. He wants to give us. That's our daddy. My daddy wanted to give us everything we wanted. At Christmas, toys were everywhere. He loved to bless us. God is the same way. He's that kind of daddy. And he sent Jesus to pay the price so that he could be our daddy and give us the desires of our heart. He did that for us. Just, just, give, just give it to me. You won't lack anything. 
People think they're missing out and they're out in the world trying to find something that's not ever going to satisfy. Drugs are not going to satisfy it. Money's not going to satisfy it. Sex is not going to satisfy it. Movies, whatever, whatever it is, whatever you, you, your passion is that you think is, is getting you through every day, that's not going to ever satisfy you. But there's only one. Amen? Jesus needs us to be humble and come to the end of ourselves and accept that we cannot save ourselves and surrender all to him. He had me put that in all caps, all to him, I surrender, all to you I surrender. James 4, 6 in the New King James and then in the Passion Cal. And this is what the young, rich young ruler didn't understand. James 4, 6 Then he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God resists the pride. I remember my dad trying to humble, uh, just hammer that humility into us. Always stay humble. You know, I don't even, want, I don't even like to look at myself online after I teach on YouTube or whatever. I, I, I very minimally, I just always remember, stay humble. I never want to think that I'm more than what I am because I'm nothing without him. I'm standing here not because of me. It's him in me. I can't stand up here and give the messages that I give because he gives them to me. It's not me. And he kept saying, humble, be, stay humble. He told us that before he left to go to heaven. He told us, stay humble. Boast not yourself up tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring forth. Those things he taught us before he left and drilled it into us, stay humble, because so many people get, you know, get in their job, get in their position, or get whatever, look at Hollywood, they get you know, built up, and then they're committing suicide, or they're getting killed, or something's happening. We have to be humble. Amen? Let's look at it in the Passion. I don't remember what it said, but... I said, look at it there, James 4, 6. Got it, Cal? That it? But he continues to pour out more and more grace upon us. For it says, God resists you when you are proud, but he continually pours out of grace when you are humble. Don't think that you're doing this all on your own getting accolades, getting, going to college, getting degrees. He's right there with you, through, getting jobs, getting promotions, getting raises. He's right there in the midst of that. Because in a minute, man can take that away, but he's right there with you. Don't worry, I got you. I got your back. I got you covered. I got the next best thing for you. I'm moving you up, not down. Right? We have to remember that in our lives. I don't know. Am I speaking to you tonight? Yeah. Amen. God is so good. We must surrender and rely on him. The worst thing we can do is to rely on our own ability to do. I can do this. I can do this. No, you can do this with the help of the, with the, help of the Lord, with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you that will quicken to you what you need to do and how to do it. Every time I, I forget, oh, Lord, what was I going to say about that? And then he'll give it to me. Where did I put that? Lord, where did I put that? You know where it is. Tell me. He'll tell you. It, I mean, it, it's been happening a lot because I've been doing a lot of things and getting, you know, all, all these, trying to do all these conferences and do all this stuff and trying to remember what I didn't do and all that. But I, ha I have to lean and depend on him because I can't do it in and of my own strength because, you know, I, I went away for a week and because I was always like, Rose, I was dreaming, okay, I got to do this, I got to remember to do this, I got to do that, I have to shoot this, I have to take this, I have to do that. That's my whole thought process is when I'm asleep, when I should be having sweet sleep in the right. beloved. Yeah. But when, when I, you know, this week, this, when I was gone for this week, I said, Lord, I'm just going to give it to you, I'm going to shut down. And I'm not going to think, you know what my day is like for tomorrow. You'll remind me. I don't have to keep trying to remember everything I have to do and get it done. You're going to show me. I have to, we have to keep care of our, our mind and our bodies, right? Because that's what gets us down and out and gets stressed out and get sickness and disease in our body, right? We have to give everything over to him. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus hates self-righteousness. And the worst thing we can do is to rely on our own ability to do. Your righteousness is not yours. It was a gift that Jesus gave you. And so in 1 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21 in the New King James and the Passion. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Go to the next one. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. When Jesus was on that cross, beyond a recognition of a man beaten, this book gave a big uh, illustration that his back was just torn open from the stripes and that was him carrying our our sickness our sin everything that we would have to go through he bore it in his body he didn't even look like a man he looked like a piece of meat he did that for us he took on sin so that we can become righteous in him that's not we don't we can't take that lightly We have to get get in these. If you didn't write down these scriptures, go back and listen and write down. Look up these for yourself and put your eyes on it so you understand the price that was paid for you. Amen? Let's look at it in the Passion right quick. I'm almost done. We are ambassadors of the Anointed One who carry the message of Christ to this world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf. Turn back to God. Be reconciled to him. For God made the only one who did not know sin, he didn't know sin, he came here sinless, to become sin for us so that we might so that, so that we who did not know righteousness might become righteousness of God through our union with him. That's how we are righteous. When you, when you beat up yourself about a mistake or anything, you, uh, no, no, no. Jesus bore that. I'm the righteousness of God. I repent for what I just said or did. I am the righteousness of God. The more you understand who you are, the understand you'll stand tall and you'll be the righteousness of God and no one can tell you nothing different. But we have to do that. Amen? It's a gift from Jesus. It's his righteousness. We are to confess that we are right. When we we are to confess that we are righteousness, but we always have to add that we are righteous through him. We are righteous through him. Thank him for the gift of righteousness. This is our access to the abundant life. He is our righteousness. He is our helper. He's our comforter. In the midnight hour when you're going through things, when you're thinking, when, the, when you're having thoughts about everything that's happening in your life, he's right there with you. John 10.10, 10, we know this familiar scripture in the Amplified Classic. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you, they may have and enjoy life, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Go back and put that up, that the thief, the devil, comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may, that you, that I, say I, I, he came that I may have life, may have and enjoy life, enjoy, I'm glad he added that in there, have and enjoy life, we're supposed to be enjoying life, have it to abundance, to the full Till it overflows. That's not somebody withholding riches from us or goodness for us or health for us. That's our God. He wants us to have an abundant life. But it's through him. It's not through the world. It's not a man can't do it. A a, a human being is not capable. That's why God had to send Jesus. He was sinless. And 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 he experienced everything that we went through in, are going through, have went through, are going to go through in this world, but he was sinless in doing it. So he knows what we go through. 
But he loves us so much. And he, sends, and he stands ready to help us and show us how to live the abundant life to the full till it overflows. I want that life. I have that life. I have that life. We all can have that life, but we have to lean and depend on him. We can't go home and, and we, we, amen, I, I wrote down these scriptures and not go home and, and pick up this word and, and look at it and put it. I have so many Bibles and different translations. I look up each one. I want, to know the, I want to know the depth because there's so much depth in the word. We, can only, we only can see a little bit of it, but if you start studying out, you can see how vast the scriptures are. That's why I like that book because I can see all these different meanings. It's like, okay, now this makes sense. You know, because we have to, we have to get the word on the inside of us. Jesus' desire is uh, for us to not merely exist or cope with our circumstances, but to live abundantly. The process starts with making our relationship with God the priority in life so he can guide you and show you his plan for your life. God wants to help you with the ups and downs of life. He knows how to, he knows what, what steals your peace, right? He knows what steals your peace, but he's faithful and will remove all obstacles to smooth out the rough circumstances you face. He is faithful and will remove all obstacles to smooth out the rough circumstances you face and then show you and teach you what's best for you. He will show you. Your part is to clear the way, <laughs> clear your schedule, so that time with God isn't just a good intention or after thought or during a crisis. Everybody comes to him when there's a crisis. But the way that you start is your everyday life, throughout your life, you get to know him. You get to know your father. You get to know Jesus, who's our big brother, who God sent to redeem us. You, ha you can hear the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you, telling you, don't do that. Don't make, oh. don't make that decision. And I've made some decisions, and I, why did I do that? Why didn't I do this? Why did I do that? It's so important that we can hear his voice. He wants us to have an abundant life. He wants us to put up, put up that picture again, Cal. He wants us to continue. Yes, we're going to have obstacles. We're going to go through, through roads and turns and twists, but we will always come out a winner. When we, when, we, when we walk with him. I like that. Because we can see, you know, we're, we're on the path, we're on the path, and then there's a curve. We're getting back on, and then there's another one. But more, the more you spend time with him, the more you get to know him, the more you lean on him, depend on him, and just accept what the word says. Don't try to argue with it. Don't try to say, this can't, this is too good to be true. Yes, it is, but it's true, and it's for us. Amen? Did you receive, Diane? You want to come up and... Gar, can you hand that to Diane when she comes? That microphone. Did you receive anything, or did I just preach to myself? <laughs> no, you did not just preach to yourself. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, glory to God. Rose, I have to say this in front of everybody. You have been bringing such excellent word and such messages that the past, the past couple of times, I think it's like the past three times that you preached. This, it's just amazing. Praise God. We, we are blessed. We are blessed because, you know, you, you thank you for your obedience to the Holy Spirit because this has been amazing. It has definitely been amazing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, and w one thing that stand out, and you said that the Lord showed you this all in capitals, was surrender all to him. And we have to surrender all to him. He has to be first in our, in our lives. Okay, and uh, you know, we're talking about the, the uh, rich young ruler. He, ha he wasn't willing to give, he, he had to be willing to give it all up to follow him, to follow Jesus, and he, he, he just wasn't. But we need, to, we need to be in that position to say, God, Lord, there's nothing that's, 
that I won't give up to, to serve you because, because think of what like you were saying about righteousness. That righteousness has been like something. He who knew no sin became sin, that we become the righteousness of God in him. That, that is so serious. You know, Sharon and I speak to ladies. Where she go? She's, there she is. We, Sharon and I speak to ladies who don't have an understanding of that. Amen. And, uh, and uh, to, to try to explain to them that you cha- when you accept Jesus, that you change inside. And uh, sometimes I think that they don't actually realize, you know. But they, you, you, when you do, you change inside. You become righteous inside. And, um, and it's not just to think, well, okay, well, I'm a good person. You know, I, uh, you know, I, uh, I stop at the red light and I stop at, st- uh, you know, at the, at the stop sign and, you know, that kind of stuff. No, it's, 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 that, that it's you, you, no matter how good you think you are, it doesn't measure up. Okay. It's, a, it's a changing. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he comes in and changes you. So that's so important. So I'm going to lead you in a, in a prayer. Okay, for those of you, who, those of you who are watching online, and the, anybody here who has not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. So I'm just going to pray, and you just uh, uh, say this prayer with me. God in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Show me your plan for my life. And thank you for the grace and the ability to fulfill that plan. Thank you for making me fruitful in everything that I do. That pleases you. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. Okay, so if you said that for the first time and you're here, you could see one of us, Rose, myself, Georgia. I not see anybody here. And if you're listening online and you said that prayer for the first time, you could send us an email at connect at reallifepsl.com and send us a little note that says, I just got saved, or something similar to that. And we want to follow up with you and send you information. And, and this, this, I said the other night, I said disciple. I said, I, I want to say disciple. I said discipline. But I, we want to disciple. We want to teach you about the things of God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I think you want to pray for people? Okay. And yes, we never charge for, for girlfriends. But if you want to, uh, if, but if you want to uh, give an offering, uh, Ollie's going to put a basket here, and you can feel free to, to do that. Okay. I just. Okay. Okay. If you didn't hear that, Amy. Okay. You have the information. This is for Amy's uh, workshop. This yes, yeah, the information. Okay. And I just want to pray over you before before you leave. Okay. Have, Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for the word that we received. Thank you that we are good soil as we hear the word. It is planted in us, and we had ears to hear this evening to have to receive that word. And, Lord, we just praise you and thank you for your protection as we leave. And I just want to say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord keep let his face shine upon you and be gracious over you. And the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.